There were two small buildings perched on the hill that overlooked the suburbs, both of them were painted in a calming shade of blue, and they had white shutters that were artistically carved and rooftops that were bright red, despite the fact that one of them was somewhat larger than the other, they appeared to be identical twins, like two mushrooms secreted away in a clearing, this even extended to their fencing, which consisted of two gates and a chain-link mesh that separated the properties. So that there was no obstruction to the view, in the distant past, these cottages were inhabited by two groups of relatives, one older and one younger, who had constructed their dwellings in this magnificent location nevertheless, as time went on and years flew by, fate intervened, and the properties came to be occupied not by blood relatives but by two friendly and generous persons. An elderly woman named Vera and a young woman named Nadezhda, both of these women were able to make the houses. Their home, despite the fact that they were not related to one another, they shared a close tie that was comparable to that of a family, Ladaka, Nadezhda's daughter, was rapidly maturing, she was only three years old when Nadezhda's husband, in a fit of rage, abandoned them, leaving her to raise their daughter by herself. Nadezhda may have been in a more precarious condition if it weren't for a fortunate turn of events that brought their neighbor Vera Borisovna over to their house for some. Sugar, after coming to the realization that continuing to live with such a violent spouse posed a risk to their lives, Nadezhda ultimately found the strength to file for divorce with Vera's assistance, in order to provide for her kid, she worked relentlessly and accomplished a remarkable amount of success on her own, Nadezhda's talent as a dressmaker allowed her to attract customers not only from the surrounding area, but also from the city in the regional capital, this was despite the difficulties she faced. Vera Borisovna took Nadezhda under her wing during this period of time, and she provided care not just to Nadezhda but also to Ladaka, these two women were both under her care, their friendship became stronger as they ate together, told each other stories before going to bed, and finally assisted Ladaka with her schoolwork when she started attending school. As the residents of the twin houses discovered that they could find satisfaction in sitting around a communal table in the yard, which was shaded by a sprawling maple tree, the chain-link fence that separated their homes quickly became a symbol of their friendship and partnership, an old neighbor who was a reservoir of thousands of humorous anecdotes and the most recent gossip always entertained Hope and Ladaka over their nightly tea, which was a treasured ritual and custom for the three of them. The two of them found comfort in each other's company while living on a hillock that was only a short distance away from them. Hamlet, they took great pleasure in their own female-centric kingdom, the weekends were filled with activities that they enjoyed doing together, such as preparing dumplings, going to the store to acquire supplies, and having spirited chats about anything and everything under the sun, while Ladaka was growing up and pursuing her education. Hope had dreams of becoming a veterinarian, at the same time, she was working part-time as a nanny at a kindergarten on top of her other responsibilities. The allure of her youth had not yet made its way into her heart, despite the fact that she was charming, on the other hand, Nadia ended up suffering a terrible finger injury while she was working, which was an unexpected and tragic event, after treating the wound and continuing on with her life, she finally succumbed to an infection that ultimately proved to be fatal, taking her life at the youthful age of 18. She had initially dismissed the incident as a minor incident, Vera Borisovna. Became her solitary confidant and source of solace after her father had passed away for a considerable amount of time and there were no other relatives to whom she could turn for support. Despite the fact that she had to travel through the forest by herself from the station, Ladaka continued to attend the village on a regular basis, she had made the decision to maintain her connection to her roots, on numerous occasions, Vera Borisovna would greet her, named granddaughter, as they walked through the forest trail, together, they would make their way towards their peaceful hamlet sanctuary. When they strolled hand in hand on this particular spring day, Ladaka engaged Baba Vera. In animated conversation as they walked side by side, at that moment, 
a playful wolf cub suddenly appeared on the road and paused to investigate the three individuals, Vera Borisovna didn't seem to be bothered by the situation and made the following observation, look at this little one, not a hint of fear, perhaps he smells the Krakow sausages I bought, let's treat him, well, what's all this fuss about, Baba Vera, are you planning to turn into the forest's feeding station for wolves, let's pick, up the pace, it's not even an hour before the she-wolf shows up again, and then we'll have a whole pack of them nibbling at us, despite the urgency, the women hurried along, but the wolf cub persisted in following them, after successfully removing a sausage from the string bag, they shattered a piece of the sausage and threw it into the bushes along the side of the road, as they walked along the road. The small predator excitedly pounced on the treat and let out a contented purr as they did so. The most exciting portion of the story took place a week later, when Ladaka came face to face with the wolf once more while he was traveling, it appeared as though this grey marvel had been excitedly anticipating her arrival, most likely smelling the sausage from a certain distance. This was the beginning of the improbable friendship that would eventually develop between the young girl and the young wolf on Fridays. The she-wolf would wait for Ladaka to arrive, at which point she would receive her share of the treat and then accompany the young lady back to the village settlement. At the beginning of each Sunday, she would make her way back to the train, therefore establishing the rhythm of their seasonal closeness over the course of the transition from spring to summer and early autumn, the once tiny cub matured into a lovely woman, on the other hand, as winter's arrival drew near, the days became shorter and darkness arrived earlier, on a certain evening, Ladaka was sleeping in the train car, and she was completely oblivious to the fact that a man was watching her. Quite closely, after disembarking at the same station, he continued to follow her down the road that went into the woodland, Ladaka smiled when she hummed a tune under her breath, despite the fact that the night was getting darker, her grin was a reflection of the memories she had of the previous day, at that moment, Ladaka was startled by the loud crunch of branches behind her, which caused her to turn around, only to discover a man rapidly approaching, her heart was filled with fear when she sped up her pace, but the man continued to pursue her, increasing his speed to the point that he was almost running, as soon as Ladaka became aware of his evil aim, panic began to set in, her prayers for protection were soaring higher and higher to the sky with each step that she took, and her heart was pounding in her chest, while the man was racing through the forest, he quickly caught up to Ladaka and positioned himself at the next bend in the trail, he appeared eager to engage in a nefarious game of cat and mouse, a terrible howl pierced the air from behind the person who was attacking, and before anybody could respond, it was heard, when the man turned around, he was confronted by the terrifying presence of a she-wolf that was roaring with a great deal of intensity, with the flash of a knife blade, the air was filled with the shine of the blade, but before he could strike, the predator sprang at him with intensity. Ludaka was rendered immobile by the shock, and all she could do was watch when the scene played out in front of her eyes. Even though he narrowly avoided being devoured by the she-wolf, the man managed to escape and make his way towards the station, leaving his knife behind in the snow while Ludaka was rushing to the side of the injured she-wolf her instincts as a future physician kicked in and she began to check the wounds that the animal had sustained, she was relieved to discover that the she-wolf had not been hurt in any way, Ladaka, overcome with feelings of gratitude, embraced her newfound pet, amazed, at the extent to which animals are loyal and willing to sacrifice for their kind, she couldn't help but feel a sense of astonishment at the relationship that had been established between them when she reflected on the events that had transpired over the day, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar one. A quick peek at the clock revealed that it was just 4 o'clock in the morning when Zenaida awoke early to find that the surrounding area was dark, despite the fact that she had not slept a single wink, her thoughts was restless because she was anticipating an important event, meeting her granddaughter, whom she had not seen in a very long time, at the train station later that day, it could have been the anticipation of the upcoming reunion that kept her awake, 
or it could have been the onset of insomnia taking hold of her, or it could have been the culmination of a lifetime of events. Taking into consideration that she was now in her eighth decade, which was 70 years old, Zenaida's head had been flooded with a variety of thoughts recently, all of which were nostalgic about her past memories poured back, including her wonderful childhood in the countryside, her tough yet gratifying school years, and the warmth of her family and friends during a simpler period, she reminisced about the carefree days of her school and technical school years, the blushes and bashfulness, and the innocent flirtations that she had experienced when she was younger, her studies were finished. And she went back to work in the village, it was there that she met Andre, who would later become her husband, Andre had recently returned from the military, the next year, they tied the knot, and since then, their daughter has brought an incalculable amount of happiness into their life, now, as her daughter was getting closer and closer to being an adult. Zena Ida couldn't help but be concerned about the spouse that her daughter might choose, it was impossible for Zena Ida to prevent her daughter from continuing the relationship with Pavel, despite the fact that she had some misgivings about Pavel's affections for her daughter, and then, without warning, her daughter made the announcement that she had made the decision to marry Pavel, leaving Zinaida with a range of feelings when she looked forward to the future. A short while ago, she sent in her applications, and they were accepted, Zinaida hushed, congratulations, while nodding her head and smiled in a somewhat dramatic manner. Her daughter was teased by her mother, who said, perhaps you'll get your diploma before I do, however, before Zina Ida could query about the rush, her daughter interrupted her with a bashful smile and whispered back, I'm pregnant, soon, it'll be noticeable, she continued by saying, we love each other, what else can we expect, Andreusha, Zenaida's husband, was not the only one who was aware of her worries, confessing, I'm worried about Lisa, my heart isn't at ease, she admitted, Andre Ivanovich was able to calm her down by telling her not to interfere in their daughter's life and I don't trust this Pasha, there's something about him, it was him who reminded her that, our daughter is intelligent and self-sufficient, let's trust her judgment, and if he deceives her, well, she doesn't love him, I can tell, shortly after that, they went to the registrar office to sign their names, and they started their life together as a family. With the intention of starting again, they relocated to a distant city that was located closer to Pavel's relatives. Trouble, on the other hand, appeared to follow, letters from Lisa grew increasingly difficult to come by, and Zinaida and Andre spent less and less time with their granddaughter, tragic events then took place, the passing of Andre was followed by Lisa's illness, which finally resulted in her being separated from her birth mother, unfortunately. Zina Ida was only able to attend the funeral because she was not informed of her daughter's sickness beforehand following that, Dasha, Lisa's daughter, made contact with her grandmother, her wish to visit her mother's country and re-establish a relationship with her grandma was stated when she was 18 years old, upon their reunion, the grandma and granddaughter discovered an instant connection with one another, Dasha was a perfect reflection of her mother, both in terms of her appearance and her attitude, the relationship between Zinaida and Dasha was easy to form, and Dasha made a proposal to Zinaida, saying, I'll live with you for some time, if you're not against it, Zinaida had a feeling that Dasha had some underlying fears, but she did not probe into the matter since she respected her granddaughter's right to privacy in the relationship between Dasha, her father, and her other grandma, it appeared that not everything was going smoothly, the two developed a strong relationship to one another in spite of this. Dasha obtained employment at a remote library and thoroughly enjoyed the life of a villager as a result of Zenaida's conviction that her granddaughter yearned for affection and care, she decided to take on the role of a nurturing grandmother, Dasha benefited from her expertise in the areas of homemaking, cooking, sewing, knitting, and embroidery during her time with her. Over the course of their time together, they frequently went into the woods to search for berries and mushrooms on a bright summer day. They happened upon a newborn kitten in the woods, and the sound of its cries could be heard throughout the 
Woodland, Zena Ida was unable to argue with her granddaughter Dasha's request to save the wild animal. Despite the fact that she was aware that such an animal would not be able to fit into their home, after adopting the kitten, they gave it the name Russian Woman, and they regarded it as a totem for their collective family, the kitten matured into a stunning and graceful cat over the course of time, all the while being able to freely roam the adjacent forest. Dasha found herself at the farm by herself on one of Zenaida's visits to the town, during the time that she was preparing dinner, too. People who were exhausted and hungry came upon their hut, not only did Dasha provide them with a place to stay, but she also provided them with delectable cuisine, on the other hand, one of the strangers started searching through their possessions, while the other one approached Dasha, motivated by hunger, as the situation became more dire, Dasha found that she was unable to communicate because she was overcome with panic. When Dasha finally got a moment of clarity, she let out a piercing scream. At the top of her lungs, which jolted the invaders who were harboring nefarious plans, because of the presence of the forest talisman, their attempt to take advantage of the scenario was unsuccessful, fate interfered and prevented them from doing so, Dasha was rescued from peril when the wild cat, upon detecting her distress, pounced on the individuals who were attacking her, the cat was still young and nimble, which was fortunate for Dasha because it gave her the opportunity to defend herself. He was rendered unconscious as a result of her quick thinking, which resulted in her striking one of the attackers with a log, while this was going on, the talisman was able to deter the second attacker, the attackers were still unconscious when Dasha took control of the situation and bound them with a rope while they were still unconscious, next, she solicited the assistance of the people, who were then directed to the officer of the local police force, justice was carried out with them. Assistance of the talisman that was found in the forest. Immediately after the event, Dasha made the decision to remain in the hamlet permanently with her grandma and the pet that they had together, who had red hair, she was able to discover her genuine sense of belonging and power in this place, which was characterized by the peace and quiet of village life, that's all about this story and now let's watch the next one. My mother and I often traveled to the village on May 9th to pay a visit to my father's grandma, this was our regular behavior, after a protracted illness, my mother passed away a year ago, and my father had passed away many years earlier, both of my parents had been battling disease for a long time, it was finally her disease that took her life, as evidenced by her recent passing, there is only one grandma in the entire world, and she is my grandfather, her name is my grandmother, due to the fact that they had been together for the entirety of the war. Both of them had unique military histories, during the war, my grandfather served in the army and even made it to Berlin, my grandmother, on the other hand, was a nurse and worked tirelessly to care for those who were injured on the battlefield, in the middle of the chaos of war, fate brought them together, and despite the fact that my grandfather's life was sadly cut short after the war, they acquired a large number of decorations, orders, and medals all of which my grandmother treasured deeply throughout her entire life since I was a child, my family has made it a custom to pay a visit to our veteran relatives in the village on May 9th, this tradition has persisted even after my father passed away, and my mother and I continue to make it a point to visit my grandma on this day every year, my grandma and I have not seen each other in the hamlet since my last visit, which was two years ago, having a strong affinity for that house. With its finely carved embellishments and vivid front garden that is in full bloom, is something that I have, my spirit has. Always felt connected to that location. Despite the fact that I've spent my entire life in the city, when I was reunited with my grandmother, I realized that the passage of time had left its imprint on her face, nonetheless her spirit remained as resilient and lively as it had been before. Following the ritual of embracing one another and crying tears, we started to catch up on the happenings of the previous years, as my grandmother was setting the meal. Recollections of the experiences that she and my grandfather had during the war.
came flooding back to her, as we raised a glass to victory day, I told her about the challenges I have in my life now that my mother is no longer here, in turn, my grandma related the most recent gossip that had been going about the hamlet, but the most shocking information was still to come, don't be frightened, granddaughter, she soothed me, I've acquired a new companion, a dog, or rather, not just any dog, but a wolf, she proceeded to narrate the narrative of how she happened upon a wild animal. Captured in a trap during one autumn mushroom picking expedition in the familiar woods, what could possibly cause a veteran military medic to disregard such a defenseless creature, my grandmother, who was having a hard time freeing the puppy that was imprisoned inside the mushrooms, emptied her basket of mushrooms, placed the distraught creature inside, and then brought it home to be cared for, in the beginning. She was not aware of the true nature of her new visitor, it was not until a neighbor came by and disclosed that the animal was a predator that she became aware of the seriousness of the situation. My grandmother was adamantly opposed to the idea of returning the wolf cub to the forest, despite the fact that the villagers insisted that she do so, she rebutted their complaints with a manner that was as determined as her days during the war, she asserted that such a creature, with its obvious appreciation for being rescued, deserved a place in her home, she developed a fondness for the wolf. Assuring me that I should not be afraid of him, despite the fact that he roamed freely throughout the forest but came back to the hayloft every night to seek protection, it was her belief that we would soon become friends with him as well, in addition, she brought up a recent recent development which was the construction of a road in the vicinity on behalf of one of the builders, a young man named Anatoly, whom she had recruited for a relatively low charge, the authorities requested that she provide hospitality for him, because of Anatoly's presence, my suspicions were heightened, despite the fact that I had teased her about the sudden entrance of a male in her residence despite the fact that he appeared to be friendly and polite, I was uneasy about him since he was evasive about his history and because he was not registered to be on the road crew, from the very beginning, there was something about him that I found to be unsettling, for some reason, despite the fact that my grandmother was adamant about rejecting my concerns, I discovered that I was unable to rid myself of the uneasy sensation that stayed within me, stop, granddaughter, she encouraged, putting an end to my questions, I observed with a heavy heart as she reminisced about the years during the war, and then I rose gently and approached the framed photograph of my grandfather that was hanging on the wall, after retrieving a huge box from the chest of drawers, she meticulously arranged my grandfather's medals and orders on the table, among the items she placed on the table was his order of glory, which was accompanied by three red stars seeing the tears that were beginning to form in her eyes, I was taken away by the intensity of her feelings I never knew, Vera Semyonovna, about your heroic past, Anatoly observed as he looked at the awards, his eyes displaying a particular admiration for Vera Semyonovna, when I noticed that he was looking at me with a sense of dread, I was unable to shake the impression that something was wrong. On the following day, my grandma took me to the city to go shopping, and she left Anatoly behind to take care of his duties, making the most of the opportunity to get in touch with old friends and acquaintances in the hamlet, I passed the time until it was time for lunch by doing something that I liked doing. When I got back to my house, I was confronted with a terrible sight. Anatoly was diligently searching through the things that belonged to my grandmother in the bathroom, completely ignorant. To the fact that I was there, as he rapidly stuffed his items into a bag and nonchalantly transferred the contents of my grandfather's box of orders into his own, his movements conveyed a great deal of information. At that same instant, I had the sensation that a dagger had been thrust into my chest. My grandmother placed a great deal of importance on such relics since they served as treasured reminders of the bravery that her late husband displayed while serving on the front lines, on the other hand, there they were, hurriedly stuffed into a bag as if they were of no consequence, it was impossible for me to conceal my anger as Anatoly was closing the zipper on his luggage and he got sight of me standing at the entrance, what are you doing, put my grandfather's awards back where they belong, I yelled, 
my voice shaking with rage and confusion, what are you doing? I threatened him with my bare hands. And I did not feel any fear at that point, I did this by reminding him of the sacrifices. That were made by fragile souls like my grandmother who sacrificed their lives to help wounded troops who were under fire, however, before I could respond any further, a tremendous hit struck on my face, causing me to fall to the ground with blood flowing out of my nose, Anatoly stepped over me and made his way toward the exit while I was stunned and disoriented, I attempted to regain my footing as he made his way back toward the exit, instantaneously, the wolf that belonged to my grandma, materialized in the entranceway. Evaluating the circumstances with reflexes as quick as lightning, he pushed Anatoly to the ground with a fast leap, and his terrifying growls and bared fangs left little room for doubt as to what his goals were during their encounter. In a state of panic, I ran out onto the street and screamed for assistance as my neighbors came to my rescue and the police were taken into consideration. During the time that I was carefully retrieving the veterans' awards and making sure that they were locked away. In a secure location away from inquisitive eyes, Anatoly was captured and taken into custody, I was struggling to calm my strained nerves, and the loyal wolf that was by my side offered me wordless relief, tears flowed down my face as I faced this challenge, upon my grandmother's return later that evening, we embraced one other firmly, expressing our gratitude for the courageous intervention of our devoted protector. The people were able to find comfort in the presence of our unwavering protector. From that day on, since they were aware that their safety and security were guaranteed, regarding Anatoly, one could say that justice had been done, when I think back on this terrifying situation, I find comfort in the unflinching loyalty of our furry pet, which serves as a symbol of bravery and protection during this difficult time for us.